that system. It's called the CEM, that's the Coordinated Electronic Music System. And at the time, not only was it a large system, but you'll also notice it doesn't have any keyboards. This was not a keyboard system. It was a system that was designed for multiple levels of control. And that's something that we'll be talking about here as well. But essentially, th that stuff that's on the near, in the near cabinet there is, a, is actually a digital clocking system, a very er early digital uh, clocking system. One of the, one of the perhaps might have been the first that was integrated into an analog system that would uh, allow you to work with up to eight different sets of digital signal trains, clocking trains, that would then control those eight sequencers that are part of the system. And so you could have those sequencers all controlled uh, together so that they could be in unison or simultaneously or independently or any combination of that on all these different time disks. So the, the reason that this thing doesn't have any keyboards, I mean, this, of course, was at a time when, when electronic music was, was basically avant-garde music and keyboards were kind of disdained. The idea of doing tonality stuff on electronic music was pretty, was frowned on, I'll say. Uh, but, the other thing is that the Joel's uh, uh, Joel's uh, the same thing. Joel's idea was that a keyboard, uh, particularly those keyboards, which were those keyboards at the time, which were essentially just triggers. Essentially, you'd get a pitch and a trigger out of them without any kind of expression. They didn't have velocity or anything like that. Is a very low level of control, and Joel was much more interested in multiple levels of. Control. When you have a keyboard like that and you hit the key, uh, and those are of course also monophonic keyboards, I mean they would do one thing when you hit the key, you were exerting a very low level of control. You were directly controlling the, uh, the pitch and the, well, the fact that the note turned on and off, the actual shaping of the note, this thing would never work out, but the, the initiation of the note and the pitch of the note was what you were controlling. You didn't really have any direct control over timbre or of amplitude or any of that stuff. All of that had to happen somewhere else. So you were working at a very level, a low level of control and a, and a very kind of non-powerful level of control. It's, it's, if you're a keyboard virtuoso and you want to play a lot of fast lines, that's great. But if you're trying to do something more complex with more density, the, you really need higher levels of control. You need a system in which some of that control is, is taken care of somewhere else, where the machine itself does some of that control, and you control control. And that's what, that's what he meant by higher levels of control, where you would, and you would set up systems or processes, and a lot of times we would set up things in this system that were essentially self-playing, that would generate their own sounds, and then we would interact with that system to change the way that the system was controlling itself. But you were able to then do a much higher level of control. You're, you weren't necessarily intimately connected with the individual note, the individual pitch, but you were able to control many different levels of, of activity in the system itself, including multiple lines, multiple voices, multiple different uh, types of timbre control, both of wave shaping, of wave control, but of also opening and closing filters and so forth. So with a system like this, you were able to work at a higher level than the individual note, and that's really what that's really what this was designed to do. And this, of course, was pre-desktop computers. I mean, this was still the mainframe era, so there really weren't there was experimentation being done, but there really were no commercially available products that would give you any kind of computer control. Now, of course, where where uh, laptops, I mean, basically my iPad does more than that mainframe did that, that, that ran the whole school back in 1970. You have, a, you have the ability to do, to do many, many different levels of control, the very high levels and very low levels, and simultaneously by letting the computer mediate some of that control. And of course, we're all familiar with that now. Of course, you can do a complete performance basically with just a laptop and, and turning it on, essentially, and letting it run, or interacting with it in various ways that you're familiar with. So the idea being here that this machine would allow for multiple levels of and that's one of the things that I'm trying to do with this system is reproduce some of that idea, that concept of multiple levels of control.